Hey, what's up, everyone? James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining me. And we are filming this on the very first day of 2023. So first things first, Happy New Year's to everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday season, got to eat great food, hang out with some loved ones, stayed warm, kept your pets warm, and all that good stuff. With that being said, first, I want to apologize for my voice. It's a little deeper and scratchier than usual. I have a nasty cough, but the show must go on. And second is if you hear cars and dogs barking and meowing i'm filming this next door to my house i have a little tradition where every year the first video that i make is looking back at the previous year and i make the top five favorite junkyard fox adventures that we filmed and it's a great way to look back and reflect and see just how far we've come how how much we've grown as outdoorsmen as youtubers as businessmen so first things first, I got to say that 2022 had some very big shoes to fill. It's almost not fair because 2021 was like the best year of my life. And I feel the best year for Junkyard Fox in terms of the variety of adventures. I mean, it was just incredible. Just so much traveling, so much learning, the diversity in terms of the range in terms of the videos and stuff was incredible. So I'll have that link up here if you want to check it out for the top five adventures of 2021. Did 2022 quite meet that? Not quite. It fell a little short. I'm not saying that 2022 was crappy in any way. There was still a lot of learning. In fact, a lot of great things happened. I got to teach my first class in person, Desert Survival for the Texas State Guard. That was incredible. I was very nervous. Now, of course, I've taught, you know, a friend or two or Cuervo or something, you know, little things while out in the field. But this is the first time I'm teaching a group of people that I do not know. And once again, very nervous, but it was very rewarding. It was very fun. Also, I was published in a magazine for Texas Co-op. I was interviewed in terms of the flora in West Texas, you know, the edible plants and the uses and all that stuff. I'm very proud of that as well. Got to embark on a five-state road trip from Texas going all the way up to Washington with my brother. That was very awesome. Very Jack Kerouac. A really great adventure to start the year there. Okay, so enough rambling, let's get this list underway. Now keep in mind that these are my top five favorite Fox videos of the year personally. That doesn't mean that they were the most popular, that they got the most views, made us the most revenue, none of that. So these are just my personal favorites of the year. So let's start off with number five and make our way up to number one. So number five is gonna be the BK62 Kephart knife review. Now it's pretty rare for a knife review to make it to the top five Fox videos of the year because as fun as they are, I don't feel they're diverse enough or different enough or, or anything like that to make it up here. However, even though this one really doesn't do anything that you haven't seen in the channel before, I think it came together just beautifully. We got to test out, you know, a knife that's the closest replica to the original Kephart. And of course, we pay tribute to Kephart, one of our ancestors of the bushcraft community, a, a great grandfather to all of us when it comes to the outdoors. So it kind of pulls double duty. So we get to test the knife out. You get to see the woodworking, the fire making, the food prep, the game processing, which is nobody does but us. So I thought that was really cool. It all came together beautifully. Also, of course, we're paying tribute to Kephart himself. So we, you know, I dress up as Kephart, you know, something a little goofy. But once again, we're paying tribute to one of our heroes. And also it plays to the strengths of Junkyard Fox. Not only do we make a very thorough knife review, but at the same time, you know, we sometimes like to get a little production heavy and wear a costume and stuff like that, just to switch it up. And I thought this one came together very beautifully. So BK62 Kephart Knife Reviews, number five, probably doesn't deserve to be here. Probably something more diverse should have been in number five, but I just had a great time filming that video. There's only a couple of tidbits that I didn't like is one, we end the video very hurriedly because the knife was coming and it was getting very windy. So I kind of rushed it at the end. And I do say that that knife is outdated compared to modern day standards. And I do mean that. I mean, I've, you know, you test out other modernized cap parts and they just have strong, better steel. I think the edge geometry is better. Uh, so they slice stronger. There's, you know, all this stuff. But at the same time, it's a classic design. I meant to say, you know, it's an outdated, but it's also timeless. So it's still going to work well. Anyway, number five, BK62. Kephart Knife Review. Video number four is going to be the Camp Cooking Cuervo's Chicken Tortilla Soup. So this one's a great one for me for two reasons. One is, as, as I've mentioned many times before, when we share things, particularly camp cooking, I really like to emphasize the American Southwest because majority of bushcrafters, majority of outdoorsmen and you know people watching YouTube 
you know, they're not watching from this corner of the world, so they're not used to this stuff. So it's it's nice for us to show, you know, what you know, our culture, our, our neck of the woods kind of stuff. So I'm sure many people have never even heard of chicken tortilla soup. So this is a good way to just show the uniqueness of our side of the world and share it with people so they can try it out. So we're not just repeating the same old, you know, a steak over the coals kind of thing that you're so used to seeing with outdoor channels. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but once again, variety is the spice of life. Try something different. So one, we get to show a new recipe. And two, it's Cuervo's recipe. And Cuervo Negro really takes over the reins on this video. I mean, he's walking us through step by step. It's his own personal recipe. I had never even tasted it beforehand. So I thought that was really cool. Longtime viewers know that Cuervo's always been very timid, very shy around the camera. So here you get to see just how much he has grown and how comfortable he is now with the audience and, you know, all this stuff. So, you know, it's a it's definitely Cuervo's video. And I, I think that's really cool. It just shows, once again, how much we've grown. And when I say the channel has grown, I don't just mean myself. I also mean Cuervo as well. So it's a great progress for him. Video number three is gonna be camping in City of Rocks, New Mexico with our buddies Red, Shadow, and Colts. So this was the year of camping. I camped a ton, whether I was by myself or I was with Cuervo, uh, but this is the first time we had that many people. I know it's only three, but that's a lot for us. Uh, we live in a city full of city slickers, so we don't have a ton of our friends that camp with us. So this was really great. Now this is the first time I was in City of Rocks. It's a very interesting campground. A ton of gigantic boulders and nooks and crannies, little caves in between them. Now we camped in the middle of summer, so it was sweltering hot. But we got to camp with our friends Red. You know, you know Red from Irish Zombie Nation, longtime buddy of mine, and Coles, who you've also seen in his channel. We got they recently moved to New Mexico, so. That was a really fun camping experience. And then our longtime friend, Shadow. So really great times. Now, I'm not someone who really gets lonely. I don't really feel that as much, I guess, because I'm a naturally a, a solitary person. But when I played the game Red Dead a few years ago, Red Dead Redemption 2, I really loved the camaraderie of the gang. If you've ever played that game, you know, during the good chapters and you get to bring food and, and supplies to your camp and it's a bunch of outlaws and they share stories and... It's just really nice. It's the, the camaraderie is really awesome. And I kind of, it made me a little lonesome. I kind of wish, you know, we had more than it was just me and Cuervo sometimes. Uh, and, you know, to trade stories and, you know, different gear and stuff. So that was like, it finally happened. And I got to camp with those fellas a couple of times already. But um, yeah, that, that was really cool. We got to film it. So, you know, drinking whiskey and then, you know, food over the, over the fire and playing music in, in a cave and stuff. So that was really fun. Video number two, and it's going to be another camping video, although a very different set of circumstances. And that's going to be my stealth camping video under a water culvert or a wa under the bridge. So that was the first time I've ever done some stealth camping on the channel. It's something I've been meaning to do for years, but let's just be honest. It doesn't sound nearly as fun, as enticing as, you know, camping in the wilderness, right? So I kept putting it off, but finally this year I decided to do it. So you know, the channel is growing, you know, we're just, you know, exploring a different side, you know, with urban survival, which it was really fun, a little scary, of course. Now, as I've mentioned before, the scariest thing you can run across is other people during some one of these adventures. Now, I, I'll take my chances with the black bear and a bobcat any day over a couple of crackheads when you're out by yourself, you know, at three in the morning. So it was a little unnerving. So I camped under this bridge and I had a hell of a view. You could see the freeway. In the city right next to me is the concordia cemetery which has been here for centuries i mean some of our western outlaws are buried in there like uh john wesley harding so really fun experience of course it's a learning experience not everything went according to plan i got attacked by ants i dropped my food and i'm big into keeping my mistakes on videos so it shows that you know i'm learning and you know you'll learn in the future and stuff you know so uh, I think a lot of these camping videos on YouTube, I think are so polished and produced that they're boring to me. So I think adding a little bit of humanity is, is important. And in that one, you know, you see the good and the bad. But overall, it was a, you know, really great experience, really fun. Uh, a little bit, you know, scary, but I think it's important, you know, if you're a prepper, anything like that, sometimes you just got to get out there. It's not just, you know, what you're carrying in your bug out bag, but actually, you know, putting it to the test. So 
that was really cool. I'm planning to do a lot more stealth camping in this coming year. And before we get to number one, let's have a couple of honorable mentions. One is gonna be our second stealth camping adventure where I camped in an abandoned farmhouse in New Mexico. That was another great one. So I, I took what I learned from the camping under the bridge and applied it about a month later. And it was still a great video filmed on 4th of July. So I'm stealth camping and you can see some fireworks in the background in the distance. So that was a really fun one. Truthfully, I couldn't decide which one I like better, the stealth camping in the farmhouse or under the bridge. I ended up going with Under the Bridge since it was the very first one. So I think it, it makes it more impactful. So yeah, but check out the stealth camping in a farmhouse. I thought that one was really fun as well. Honorable mention number two is going to be our Catch and Cook Jackrabbit video. You guys know Catch and Cook videos are my absolute favorites. And I've been trying to do a Catch and Cook Jackrabbit video for years since the channel began. And for one reason or another, I wasn't able to take down a Jackrabbit or with the chances we did, we were already filming something, so we had to stay on topic, on schedule, because you know, you're racing the sunset and so on. So finally, I got lucky and I took one down. In fact, I was, we were driving home from filming the Kephart video, and as we're making our way home, we see a couple of rabbits and they didn't see us. So I'm like, let me, let me give it a shot. And sure enough, headshot, we got one. So of course I butchered it, examined it, and then I took it a couple weeks later to, for us when we're camping. And we made a very delicious stew. Very delicious. Now, a rabbit doesn't have a lot of fat. It's a very thin animal, particularly a jackrabbit. But it was it's still a food source out here. Now, I wanted to show, one, that a jackrabbit is edible. And two, dispel the whole myth about, you know, my grandpa told me you don't hunt rabbits until the first frost to kill some kind of parasite, some phantom parasite. Uh, guys, that doesn't make sense scientifically-wise. I think it's just an old folktale that's passed down. If a rabbit has a parasite internally, it doesn't matter how cold the outside temperature is because it's going to be warm inside as long as it's alive. So that doesn't make sense. As far as like fleas and ticks, the, it doesn't matter what animal you hunt. It's whether it's a squirrel or anything, it's most likely going to have those things. So that's, that's just par for the course. So it doesn't really make a difference. Now I did inspect the animal when I butchered it. You know, the fur didn't seem to have any fleas that I saw. I inspected the liver. It was, it was a healthy young little rabbit and it was a delicious meal. The only reason it doesn't make it on the list is because you've seen us process rabbits many times. So even though it's technically a different species, it's just, you know, same ballpark. So it's not a special. And now for my all time favorite video, number one adventure for 2022 is easily gonna go to our Catch and Cook Crabs in Oregon video. That was such an adventure. That's something I've been wanting to do my entire life since I played Metal Gear Solid 3. And you know, you're playing as this character, Snake, and you're able to live off the land and one of the animals is crabs. And every time he would eat it, he'd be like, delicious. So I've always wanted to do so, but living in the desert, there's no, no crabs around. So as I mentioned earlier, I went on this awesome road trip traveling from Texas all the way up to Washington with my brother. And I just tried to squeeze in. I don't want to get in the way of, you know, what we're doing because, you know, we're, in, we're, we're on a schedule. But I was like, if we can stop in Oregon and try to do some crabbing just for one day, uh, that would be awesome and film a video. Now, if we stop and a day passes and we weren't successful, you know, the show must go on. We've got to pick up stakes and keep going. But we went, we tried. And against all odds, we managed to catch a couple of them. First time doing anything coastal, first time doing anything outdoorsy in Oregon. So that was really fun and it was delicious too, of course. We got a couple of them. We boiled them right next to the sea and got to enjoy them with a couple of beers. So, you know, great memory made. And of course the channel keeps expanding. With first time doing something coastal, first time you see a catch and cook crab video on the channel. Now, sadly, this video did very poorly. In fact, I think as of right now, it has only like 7,000 views. Keep in mind, we almost have like 90,000 subscribers. So it, that did terrible. In fact, it's probably the lowest performing video of all the videos I mentioned in this, in this one, even the honorable mentions. So it's kind of weird. Now, let me know if you saw it. Was it boring? Was the editing too sloppy or something like, like that? Let me know because I'm truly baffled. I, I feel like it was a beautiful, you know, beautiful scenery. The adventure was great. I think the editing came out great, but I don't know. It, it did very poorly. But once again, my favorite adventure because it just it's the most expansive of what we did for this year. In fact, if you go back to the top five favorite videos of last year, 
and I mentioned my New Year's resolution. One of them was to do catch and cook crabs. So, you know, mission accomplished. Favorite video easily. Always that I've always wanted to do since before I was even doing bushcraft is uh, catching wild crabs. Like I want to fish for crabs and then cook them on a beach or, you know, something like that. I've wanted to do it for years. And I think this year I'm going to go for it. I'm going to gun it and, and try to do my best to get that done. So there's that. And if you haven't seen that catch and cook crab video, I'll have the link up here. Check it out. It was awesome. Best adventure for Junkyard Fox of 2022. Now, with that being said and the year being done, it's great to look back on things and see where you've succeeded and where perhaps you didn't. It's a great time for reflection and hindsight, and that helps you project for the new year. What are your new goals, your new objectives? What can you do better? And looking back, I got to say that 2022 as a whole was a great year. But it's the first year that I can honestly say that for, our, for the channel, that quantity over to quality. Now, I'm not saying we made any really bad videos or, or crappy or anything like that, lazy videos. I think they're all good. I just don't think they were hitting the level of quality that I like because we are so busy trying to please the YouTube algorithm, uh, hurry up with deadlines in terms of, you know, what company sent us so we need to review them and so on. And so a lot of these videos are rushed. Like I said, I don't think any of them were particularly bad, but they just don't feel as thorough as they could have been. A great example is our knife reviews. You know, we start the year off very strong with the, the Reiki multi-tool review, the cap part review. But then as the year progresses and, you know, things kind of get a little bit more crazy towards, you know, getting closer to Christmas time, you see our review for the PKS Scorpion knife and the Papa Bear knife. And neither of them were we able to process game. And that's something that's very important for us. But hunting and fishing takes time. No animal wants to be caught, guys. So it takes time and patience to go fishing. It could take a couple of days, but because we're... We had to just, you know, kind of cut that side. And to me, that's just, the borders are un unacceptable. But once again, we're in a hurry to knock this out. Now, keep in mind, both Cuervo and I have day jobs. And we live on completely different sides of the city. So just for us to get together and film, you know, we got to make it happen. Because we can't just be like, well, we spent five hours and we didn't catch anything. We'll be back next week. And before you know, you're just getting more and more behind. And I don't know, I just... I, they're just not where I was happy with, and uh, I do want to get better at that. So for this year, I do want to kind of slow down, not try to knock out a video a week, but it, it's a little tricky because then YouTube penalizes you basically if you're not knocking out a video a week. So we'll, um, I got to find a balance. Now, my strategy for that is to cultivate a stronger Patreon group, and that way we don't have to worry of, you know, YouTube penalizes us for not being as consistent with videos and we can afford to take our time and make a more thorough and researched video and better edited. As for traveling for 2023, keep in mind, you know, this is still early, you know, things can change, you know how things are, but uh, so far we have a couple of early things kind of developing. One is we're likely going to go to Utah this year, probably around summertime, visit our buddy Shane, you've seen him before. And he's going to be in a yurt, so do some primitive skills, primitive camping over there. Possibly even reach out to T Jack Survival YouTube channel, and you know do some camping with him, do, have some videos. So that would be really fun. Also, our buddy Bob Hansler, fellow Texan, and he's over there closer to Central Texas. And we were uh, texting the other day, and we were thinking, you know, we've been wanting to do some, a collab adventure, doing some fishing, some foraging, that kind of stuff. So we may be going there possibly around springtime. Once again, these things are, you know, schedules can change and stuff. So I can't promise anything, but so far that's what we're planning. And lastly, around December, I'm going to New Orleans for sure for a vacation. Um, so that has nothing to do with Fox, but you know, while I'm there, I should might as well take advantage. So I don't know anything about Louisiana in terms of, you know, is December really cold and nothing's happening? But if I can head out a couple of weeks early before the vacation starts and I can do some born on the Bayou, Louisiana stuff, I would love to do that. Once again, it's December, so I can't guarantee, you know, it may be too cold for certain hunting and fishing and stuff, but that would be really great. So once again, these are still very early on, but these are Utah, Central Texas and Louisiana are places that we're thinking of going and a lot more backpacking. I, I think I did a lot of the car camping this year. Very relaxing, you know, I could, my truck's close by, so I'm able to bring a big ice chest full of beer and food and all that, but 
I think we're going to start doing a lot more, you know, primitive, you know, backpacking, just what we have on our backs kind of thing, uh, both in the wilderness and, of course, stealth camping. That's something I definitely want to explore more and definitely a three day bug out adventure. And that's something I plan to do this year, but it got pushed to the side because I had deadlines to meet. So definitely going to happen this summer. Uh, three days with my bug out bag and just living off the land, living off my, my gear, see what works, see what doesn't, see what we learn. I think that would be great. So yeah, that's, that's what's planned for 2023. So as always guys, thank you so much for all your support. We are this close to hitting 90,000 subscribers. I'm going to push to hit a hundred K subscribers for 2023. I'm also hoping to make this a full-time thing. Now, I was doing this full-time a couple years back, and I just uh, just didn't watch my finances, so I, I went back to my old job, and now I'm kind of stuck there. So, uh, the le you know, the more I have to work over there, the less time I have to go out and travel and film and edit. So, if I can just you know budget and lose that job and just kind of just do this full-time, we can just it provides far more freedom. So, I'm gonna shoot to do that as well. And that's about it for me, guys. So thank you for humoring me. Thank you for putting up with all my rambling. And I hope you enjoyed this video if you made it this far. So let me know, are these some great choices for my top five favorite Fox videos of 2022? Or am I wrong? Would you disagree with one? Would you disagree with all of them? Let me know. Let's get a discussion down below. And thank you as always, guys. Here's to a brand new year, guys. Brand new adventure. And I hope you all just health and happiness and just dirty boots. So thank you as always, guys. See you guys next week. Now go outside and get your boobs dirty.